What is causing the Arctic to warm? Polar amplification, where the poles warm more than the rest of the planet as the planet warms, has been predicted by climate models since the 1970s. This happens in models in response to increasing CO2 and warming because it affects several feedback factors at the poles differently. On the one hand, the positive ice albedo feedback is stronger at the poles. On the other hand, the negative Planck feedback is weaker there and the negative lapse rate feedback becomes positive at the poles because of the lower thermal stability of the polar atmosphere. But scientists had a problem. The warming finally began in 1976, and over time, no warming was observed in Antarctica outside the small peninsula, and the warming in the Arctic was modest, not enhanced. Twenty years had passed, and the scientists were beginning to think that the models had gotten this part of the climate wrong. This 1996 paper goes so far as to say that the relative lack of observed warming and relatively small ice retreat may indicate that climate models overestimate the sensitivity of the climate to high latitude processes. But 1997 arrived, and although Antarctica was still not warming, the Arctic began to warm strongly. Winter temperatures rose, and in summer the ice melted to limits not seen in decades of measurements, sparking climate alarmism and establishing the polar bear as an icon of climate emergency. The scientists were delighted, the models were fine, apparently no one was concerned about the 20-year lag in a process that should be instantaneous, and no one felt the need to explain it. Scientists stopped talking about Antarctica, which continued to refuse to cooperate with their theory. It was also a boon to global temperature database curators, who were able to remove the pesky hiatus from the records by including more Arctic data. I am not making this up. They themselves acknowledged this change. And we can see how the change affected the records in the UK Met Office database. But if we accept that the effect of increased CO2 on radiation is instantaneous, and that CO2 has been rising strongly since the 1950s, and if we accept that heat from the rest of the planet cannot take 20 years to reach the Arctic, then we have to look for the cause of why the strong Arctic warming started in 1997 and not earlier. And the first consideration is that the strong Arctic warming in winter cannot be due to small changes in the greenhouse effect. The reason is that in winter the Arctic is in darkness. It receives no energy from the sun, so no heat is generated there. All the heat must be transported from lower latitudes. In order for there to be a lot more heat in the Arctic in the winter, a lot more heat has to be transported from the south. And we know that this has happened because the transport of heat to the Arctic by the atmosphere and the ocean has increased in this century, as several studies have shown. What could have caused these changes? There was another factor that changed in the late 1990s. Solar activity stopped being high and began to decline. Is it possible that the decrease in solar activity is related to the increase in heat transport? The winter gatekeeper theory says yes, but what is the evidence? The most important evidence is that Arctic warming is not a new phenomenon and therefore cannot be attributed to our increased emissions. In the 1920s, there was strong warming in the Arctic. This warming was reported in the press at the time and studied by some scientists. It was well reflected in climate indicators and measurement records. For example, this study of the melting of the Greenland ice sheet shows that it was as important as the current one. What did the sun do a hundred years ago? Well, there is a solar cycle of about 100 years, which I call the Feynman cycle after the sister of a famous American physicist who first described it. Solar activity in the 1920s was also low as it is now. The grand solar maximum of the 20th century had not yet begun. Global temperature was rising in the so-called early 20th century warming attributed to natural causes, but not as much as in the 1930s and early 40s. Obviously, if low solar activity is causing Arctic warming, it must have been going on forever, and this is what a number of leading scientists specializing in the study of the Arctic say. These scientists have studied the relationship between solar activity and Greenland's temperature and conclude that over the past 4,000 years, solar activity has been inversely correlated with Greenland's temperature. When solar activity decreased, Greenland warmed, as it is doing now, 
They also say that in those 4,000 years, there have been periods when Greenland was warmer than it is now, which is inconsistent with unusual warming caused by our emissions. Arctic warming has been terribly misunderstood by most scientists. The Arctic is actually an escape valve for the planet's heat. The sun is one of the factors that opens and closes this valve, but not the only one. Arctic warming coincided with the hiatus because it reduces global warming, and the Arctic warming continues. We do not notice its effect on the global temperature much because it is matched by the gigantic El Niño of 2014-16 and by the strong effects of the Ungatonga eruption on the climate. But as long as it remains in this phase, the global temperature will have a hard time rising once the punctual effects of this phenomena dissipate. Thanks for your attention. If you like climate science and want to know more about it, you can buy my books, which are available at Amazon and other internet stores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel.